All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are so happy to be here with you today on the journey of the Master Podcast. And today we are talking about limitless abundance, one of my absolutely favorite topics. And I am so excited for this conversation today. So if you do not know her, I want to introduce you to Sarah Elizabeth, who co-creates these experiences with me. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. How are you today? I am so great. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So likewise, wow. Should we just dive right in? I think we should. I think we should just dive right in. (laughs) There's so much to talk about and you can always type your question here, Sarah, maybe you should let people know how they can do that if they have a question or they want to ask us something about this wonderful topic. Absolutely. If you're joining us on YouTube live, you will be able to see on the right side of your screen where you can type a question. We'll see the chat and we'll get to as many of those questions as we can, as we weave them into the conversation today. Thank you. Awesome. So We're talking about limitless abundance each month in our newsletter, we send out a theme or a topic and some tools, processes, and information that can support you in really embracing things like infinite abundance, infinite well-being, infinite love, infinite intelligence in your life. And this month for the month of April, the conversation about limitless abundance. So if you want to find more information about our newsletter, we'll have a link below and you can subscribe to that. It's free. And you'll find a lot of other wonderful free resources at our website, sarahlandon.com. And if you love this and want to continue to join us for our live events here that stream on YouTube, you can subscribe to Sarah Landon Life. You can subscribe down below to Sarah Landon Life on YouTube, and you'll get notifications when we release new videos and when we go live. So anything to add, Sarah? No, I think that's perfect. I'm I'm ready to dive right in. This is one of my favorite topics. Awesome. Awesome. So limitless abundance. What does that mean to you, Sarah? Oh, for me, it is having everything available that I could possibly imagine without needing to get specific about it in our current course, which is almost wrapped up. I can hardly believe it. The currency of consciousness in that very first session, the council spoke to us about wealth, really encompassing the idea that, you know, you live a life that money can't possibly pay for. And as Mm -hmm. they said that every bit of me had a resounding yes because that's what limitless abundance is for me and my experience. It's an abundance of everything. And it took me back to one of the very first things that rang so true for me, not a new concept when I was coming to know the council just about two and a half years ago, but a way of putting it that really felt resonant that not only, you know, are you worthy, but you're worthy of having it all and having it all means all the time, all the money, all the resources, all the connections, all the relationships that you could possibly desire. And so the idea that wealth, abundance, prosperity encompasses this life that you couldn't possibly pay for because so much of what we desire isn't able to be bought is my idea of limitless abundance. What about you, Sarah? I love that. I I'm so glad you talked about worth and our own personal value, because I get this question a lot. We talk about abundance. Our new course that you mentioned called the currency of consciousness is about embracing your infinite abundance. And I get this question a lot of times, how can someone be wealthy, but not understand the basic uh, concepts of attracting wealth and abundance and prosperity, or maybe not have the same level of consciousness about it that some of us discuss, but still have a lot of money. And how come some people are born into a lot of money and then over time, they no longer have the money that they had. And I truly believe it all comes down to your own personal belief in your self-worth and your value. And when we believe that our value is what we do or what we have done or what we have, then if any of those things go away, it begins to affect our sense of self-worth. And so a lot of times you see that something will change in someone's financial situation or their work or in their life or some possession. And all of a sudden their their self-worth was so tied to that, their personal value was so tied to that, that they go on this path towards debt and financial struggle 
and wonder why these things are happening to them. And I think one of the most important things, if I want to stress anything to you today is what Sarah said, you are worthy of having it all and you are worthy of having it all, all of the time. Now, there might be times in your life when you're a little more focused on health or well-being, might be times you're a little more focused on family, might be a time you're focused more on a relationship or a new relationship. And there might be times that you're really, really focused on wealth and creating more prosperity in your life. But the underlying theme of limitless abundance is prevalent in all of those areas of our life. And I believe the number one most important thing to that is your own self-worth and knowing your value is inherent. You did not come here to earn a living. Living, You did not come here to work hard and struggle and effort in order to be enough. And I see underneath for most people, this constant drive to do more and be motivated to do more and have more comes from this feeling of I'm not enough yet. I'm not enough yet. What else do I have to do to be enough? And so I invite you in this moment to just, if it feels good to you, close your eyes and take a deep breath and know that you truly are worthy of having it all. Whatever that means to you, it doesn't mean the same thing to all of us. And it's not about personal possessions or material things, although it can include those things and there's nothing wrong with that. But just taking a few deep breaths and feeling into that place within you where you align with your own infinite worth, that there is nothing that could ever happen in this human experience that could ever threaten your worthiness. And there is no external achievement somewhere out there that will ever make you more worthy than you are right here, right now in this moment. You are worthy. You are infinitely, inherently worthy. And when we align with that and we feel into that and we begin to know that within our being, we can allow the limitless abundance that is everywhere, all around us, all the time to be something that we're open to, that we embrace, that we know we're worthy of receiving. We allow ourselves to receive. We come into this energy where giving and receiving really do become one. That is to me abundance. And my favorite definition of abundance from the council is abundance is having what you want and need even before you know you need it. And true creation is having what you want, what you need, all that you could ever desire right here, right now, so that you no longer are creating this gap or this separation or this limitation or a lack of anything. What you get in life is not so much what you want or what you think you need. We get more of what we are. So when we're in a state of worthiness and we know what we need and what we want will come even before we know we need it, you can get into this state where you feel your abundance, you feel your worthiness, you feel this passion and excitement for life. You're living in a state of inspiration and enthusiasm and literally everything comes to you. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't follow energy and follow light and let yourself be guided and take the next perfect step. But it's a, big, it's a big difference between running out there and working hard and efforting and forcing and trying to make it happen and chasing after what you think you need in order to be happy versus coming into the moment and aligning with your infinite well-being right here, right now, connecting into that inherent worthiness, knowing that you have everything you need and more right here, right now within you. And we get more of what we are. And from that state, we begin to draw more to us. Things come to you. Things come to you in an easy, effortless, harmonious flow. Things just show up and it's a yes. It's not that you went out there and forced and efforted to get what you need. It's a, a completely different field of consciousness where what you need comes even before you experience the lack of it. So limitless abundance is to literally elevate your entire experience to a place where you do not experience the lack of anything. 
But when we are focused on what we don't have in this moment and we go, well, I can't be happy in this moment or I can't do what I want to do in this moment because I don't have this thing. Then in that moment, we're in an experience of separation from source in an experience of lack and limitation. And we start to focus on that. We start to feel that lack and limitation. And even though limitless abundance is available to you in every moment, when we're creating an experience of lack in the moment of anything, we can't embrace and allow all that is here for us. So I'll pause for a second, Sarah Elizabeth. I know uh, perfectly covered a lot said. of different things there. Anything you no, want to add to that? Perfectly said and leads us right to the quote that was part of our newsletter for anyone who, who has subscribed and received the April newsletter, that limitless abundance lies just beyond your current belief system. Now, I think this is really important because it's not out of reach. In fact, it doesn't take much shift at all to allow yourself into that space. In fact, you were just saying, you know, you, you can, you can, the council tells us all the time, you can either allow or deny you're either allowing or you're denying you're doubting or you're denying. And so it's the simple shift. And we spoke last month about effortless creation. And so now we're kind of extending that conversation today with the recognition that you have infinite everything. So limitless abundance is infinite money or whatever resources might be needed or desired for any creation that your heart could conjure or your imagination could conjure or even beyond limitless, infinite well-being, infinite love, infinite connection, and being in that space of really just being playful and flowing through. And I was listening to something purely inspired this morning, one of our master's class calls, um, actually the second call from our channeled series in, or, or channeled master's class call in, in March. And the council said, as soon as you start to try to explain this non-physical world, you immediately begin to limit it because you, you separate it from yourself and you limit yourself mostly. So if you simply sit, as Sarah said, stop and breathe and acknowledge that you are inherently worthy, feel for that you that is beyond everything. So rather than placing these boundaries on yourself, even in your physical form, rather than thinking of the boundary that holds you in this body, feel the energy that is you beyond that. And you'll feel that limitless, infinite abundance without a doubt. And that belief system doesn't need to be excavated, overhauled, and, you know, bring out all the possible things. The council's always telling us you don't need to uncover the root of the story there. I'm paraphrasing, but you don't need to uncover the root of the story. Just elevate your consciousness and the story, that limitation, whatever you think is underlying, it's just not there anymore. So if you feel into that expansive version of you, you'll find it and it's not far away. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for that. And if people are wondering, if you're new to us and you're wondering who's the council, what's the council, we'll have more information in the link below. And you can also find many channeled messages from the council on our YouTube channel here, Sarah Landon Life. But uh, we'll assume that most all of you know who the council is, but you can find out more information if you have questions. There's also much more on sarahlandon.com, our website. So I love what you said about that. And I'm really feeling into this energy. Each time we do one of these podcast episodes, whatever the theme is, I always see how perfectly orchestrated it is. Why is that theme showing up at that time? And these conversations that we have just bring me into this energy and this vibration and this level of consciousness where I can literally feel that moving through my body. And maybe you can feel that too. If you're listening to us, you're just feeling into this potential is possibility, you know, abundance is a plentiful supply of the good things in life, you know, a plentiful supply of resources, connections, money, friendship, love, time, sleep, well-being, all of those things. Nature to me is one of the ultimate experiences of abundance. And years ago, the council gave this beautiful analogy about abundance and nature and how to play these little games with yourself. 
that literally change your financial state, your sense of wealth and prosperity, and your experience of abundance. And so while we're creating this incredible field of abundant energy here in the co-creation of this conversation together, I really wanna talk about some practical things. I've had a lot of different experiences in my life of different levels of, of wealth from where I came from and my career and changes that I made and things that happened in my life. So I've experienced this from a lot of different levels. And you know, it's an old saying, you know, money doesn't make you happy, but life is certainly a lot more fun <laughs> when you feel really abundant and when you're living an abundant life. So many of you I know have these things within you that you want to share with the world. You want to make an impact. You want to create. You want to, your life to be an inspiration. You want to write books. You want to help people. You want to bring certain services or products to the world. And yet sometimes the thing we feel about that is that we can't do that until we have a certain amount of money in the bank saved up so that we can do what we think we want to do, right? Another definition that the council shares about abundance or explanation of abundance is having the resources to do what you're inspired to do when you're inspired to do it, having the resources to create what you want to create. And, and I would add to this that in almost every situation, whatever it is you think you need or situation you have with creating or following through on inspiration, we almost always think that the problem is money or the lack of, and I would venture to say, in my experience, it's almost never the issue. The issue is almost always clarity or you're limiting your experience. And what I have found is when we get into that state of limitless abundance, what we need comes to us and is usually priceless. It is something that money could not buy. And while money cannot buy it, if you are not in a state of abundance, you're far less likely to allow it. So I want to give a couple examples of that. Sarah said, you know, this, this teaching, this awareness that you're either in the energy of allowing or embracing your infinite abundance or you're doubting and denying it. So let's give some really tangible examples of that. If you say, I really want to allow abundance in my experience but I don't have the money I need to pay my rent. I don't have the money to quit my job and do what I really want to do. It may think, you may think that that's true, but that's what's continuing to recreate your experience of it. And that's a way that we doubt and deny our infinite abundance to show up even before we know we need it. And so we hold ourselves in these habits of thinking and our emotional habits. You know, we, our life is, made up of literally our emotions and our stories and how we feel and what we think on a day-to-day -day basis. And the council has been talking us to a lot, talking to us a lot recently about most of the time, we're just recreating the same experience every day because you have the same habits of thinking, the same habits of emotional response. You're focused on the same things and you're giving it the same meaning. So if you want your experience of limitless abundance to shift very quickly and very radically and come into this flow of all the good things in life, you've got to make some changes and some shifts. And so I'm going to share with you kind of the top things that were absolutely transformational to me when I started to embrace the council's teaching on allowing wealth, prosperity, and abundance into your life on a whole new level. The first one is one of my favorite teachings from the council. It is one of the core, 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 um, uh, messages that they have brought through to us. And I invite you to just, again, if you're in a place that you can do so, close your eyes and really feel for this. But it is the affirmation that galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. Galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. Galore, galore, I have everything I need and more. And when we're in the energy of that and we're affirming that, we're allowing that. We're allowing everything we need and more. Now, when I first heard that affirmation from the council many years ago, I went, no, I don't. <laughs> There's a perfect example of doubting and denying. No, I don't. I don't have this and I need that and I need this. 
And my mind really quickly wanted to explain all the reasons why that wasn't true. And the guidance just kept coming. Just keep affirming galore, galore. I have everything I need and more. And very quickly, I started to see, hmm, well, okay. Yeah, technically I have everything I need for today, but I need this for tomorrow and this for 10 years from now and this for 20 years from now. And it just kept coming back into the moment. In this moment, I have everything I need and more. And then I started to realize that every step of my life, even though I thought I wanted something else or I needed something else, I actually always did have everything I needed, even if it was uncomfortable. And then I started playing with this idea that galore, galore, I will always have everything I need and more. I will always have everything I need and more. And over time, that became galore, galore. I have everything I want and need and more. And it didn't take very long before that was my actual experience. And I feel and I felt that to be true. And when I felt that to be true, my reality began to organize itself to reflect that truth. And I have seen this time and time and time again. And all I can tell you is if you do it, it works. I don't, I do know kind of how it works, but I, I just assure you, if you do it, it works. So um, that's number one. Number two, and it's one of my favorite things about abundance. The council explains to us that money is energy. It's all energy. And we might've heard that concept before, but when you really break it down and you understand, when you go to the grocery store and you buy a head of lettuce or a bag of chips, whatever it is, somebody planted that seed, that head of lettuce, someone's energy literally put that seed into the ground. Someone watered that seed, someone plowed the field, someone harvested that lettuce, someone loaded it in a truck, someone drove it to a, a distribution facility, somebody drove it to the grocery store, someone loaded it on the shelf, someone gets up every morning and drives to that grocery store to open that store so that you can come in there and buy that head of lettuce. And whatever that head of lettuce costs, is the energy that went into creating it. The same is true if you buy a piece of clothing or you buy a car. The same is true when you're paying for your electricity or your cell phone or the water that you go in and you turn the faucet on. Someone put those systems in place. Someone ensures that they keep running so that you have all of these things. And one of my favorite tools is to just really, really slow down and think about all of the energy that goes into every single thing that I use every day. And within a moment, I am in this energy of absolute abundance. You can find a video of this on the Sarah Land and Life channel called the game of abundance or the abundance game, where I talk about it more, but absolutely life-changing to me. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share the third, the third practical tool and tip, but Sarah, I just want to pause and see if there's anything that you want to add to this and, and what tips and tools work for you when you're really focusing on allowing infinite limitless abundance. Absolutely. So the first thing I want to point out is we're talking about, you know, I said the, the quote was limitless abundance lies just beyond your current belief system, but nowhere in any of this have we talked about a stockpile. You don't need all the well being that your body is going to possibly need in this moment piled up right over here so that I can use it. It's just going to keep coming. And the way the council recently described this to us is in the currency of consciousness. They talked about it being a current, the current of consciousness and the current of consciousness supplying everything that we could need. So it just keeps showing up. So this is why the practice that Sarah was just talking about of being really present in the moment and recognizing, you know, I do have everything I need. I have the electricity that I need. I have the food and water that I need. I have the people and the connections that I need for this moment, right here, right now, probably even for this day and probably far beyond that, of course. However, 
there's no need to get beyond that because the stream is always flowing. It's a current. So that's one thing that came up as you were talking that I wanted to, to point out to everyone. So if you can get in the flow, which is that allowing bit, like, and you'll feel it and everybody knows what it feels like to be in the flow. You've had an experience where you know, oh, I'm in the flow, I'm in the zone, whatever the words are that you choose. That's a great way to do it. So slowing down for me, you ask for practices, slowing down and recognizing, you know, I can't think of one time that things didn't show up when I really needed them. In fact, when they didn't show up, when I thought they should have, it turned out better. It turned out far better. And maybe sometime we'll talk um, on this podcast about both of our moving experiences this past fall, but that happened for the two of us in two very, very different ways, right in the same time frame. where, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. Um, and for me, it literally turned around in a single day. Um, and it's, it's the practice. The other thing, you know, being, being present in the moment, like, just like you were saying, being present in the moment, recognizing that I have it all, you know, and not making money, the middleman. That's a practice that I keep bringing back to my mind. Am I making money? The middleman here? Maybe I think I actually need money. I have a dear friend who says um, that money is merely a token of my appreciation. And the truth is we could never really give enough money currency in our society to genuinely represent the true appreciation that we have for that person who grew that lettuce or whatever it is. Can you even begin to imagine and think through the things that bring electricity into your home? The fact that you're able to, I know when I get the basic concept of the internet and things like this, but we're right here right now, live with people all around the world. Hi, everybody. We see you popping up. We're so glad you're here. The connection, I can't fathom what I could pay for that to genuinely represent the appropriate appreciation that I have for all that's available to me at my fingertips through this computer and this connection. It's amazing. So not making money the middleman, it's merely a facilitator. And it sometimes is the quickest, simplest, smoothest facilitator. I'm not gonna say it's needed, Sometimes we might perceive it as being needed, but when it's the quickest, smoothest facilitator for your experience, it'll be there. Yeah. Many times we're limiting it because we actually don't really need it. The other thing is remembering that it's a journey. We call this the journey of the master podcast for a reason. Mastery is a journey. All of the things you begin to talk about, you know, well, I don't actually have the money I need to leave this job right now. I have personal experience, and I know that you do as well, Sarah, that if everything had been granted to me in a flash, if I could have snapped my fingers and had it right then, I became conscious to consciously aware of the fact that I just wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. It wouldn't be the most beneficial thing for me because I would miss the journey. But earlier on in my experience, I if it had just been dropped on me, a lump sum of all the money I could need for the rest of my life. I wouldn't be as happy because I wouldn't have the journey of becoming the person that I am now. I wouldn't have that experience and I wouldn't have had the consciousness to hold myself at that level of abundance anyway. So remembering the journey is the other thing for me. You said you had a third tip, share it with us. Oh, I love that so much. That was beautiful. And uh, you kind of segued into one of the one of the other tips, but it was a teaching from the council years ago when I was in a very different place about my experience of abundance. And one of the things that they said is don't ever put any money out into the world unless you can bless it and infuse the vibration of love and abundance into it. And at that point in time in my life, I had several real estate properties. I had several things I felt like I was responsible for financially, people, uh, you know, obligations and all these things. And 
in my life at that point in time, every time I had to write a check for anything or make a payment, I was just in complete resistance. I was looking at this amount of money that I had and measuring how quickly it was going to go away if I kept paying all these things. And so every time I was writing a check or every time money was going out, I was in resistance. I was resentful. I was in lack. And we're trying to think, how do we, we only have this amount left, right? How are we going to make it last? And it's exactly the opposite of embracing our limitless abundance when we're doing that. And so the council's guidance was don't, don't put any money in the world until you can bless it and send love and light with what you're doing and really experience the energetic exchange of the value in what you're doing. And so there was quite a few times where I thought I needed or was really supposed to pay something at a certain time, but I had to really slow down and get to the place where I could infuse love and light into it. But once I started figuring that out, oh my gosh, like everything started to change. Like you, you mentioned the internet, cell phone, you know, such a fascinating thing. I worked in the technology world for many years and, and I know all the people and all the infrastructure and all the things that go into putting our, uh, you know, infrastructure in place to have cell phone uh, coverage in certain places. But just when you're paying your cell phone bill, right? Someone put that tower there. Someone invented that technology. Someone created that phone. And you're not dealing with the first iteration of the phone. You're dealing with probably the 10,000th iteration of that phone that finally worked in the way it was supposed to. You have all that energy, all that innovation, all of that intelligence, all of, all of that went into what you're paying for when you write that check to pay your cell phone bill. So when you can go, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I can't believe we have this incredible technology that any time of day, anywhere in the world, I can press a button and call anyone and FaceTime them and see their face and hear them in the moment. That's pretty amazing. When you really play this game with yourself about understanding the value and the worth that you're exchanging, the value that you're exchanging, seeing the worth in everything that you're paying for, if you will slow down and do this before you put gas in your gas tank, before you pay for your groceries, before you pay that bill, really get to the place where you can do it from the most abundant place and send love and light as you infuse that money into the world and send that money into the world. One of our dear master's class members, um, Laurel, taught me this, but she plays a little game with money and it's, I love money and money loves me. I love money and money loves me. And to watch her interact with the world, that's just her experience. Currently, her source of income comes through her spouse. And yet her belief system is, I love money and money loves me and it can come in any way. And she tells all sorts of different stories of how random amounts of money came to her in expected and unexpected ways. But her belief is, I love money and money loves me. And we ended up even finding out that there was this thing that she was supposed to be paying for that for a long time, never, she was still in the program, but she wasn't paying for it. And it's like abundance comes in all sorts of different ways. And I know um, we have a lot of different experiences about this, including kind of our moves, Sarah, that we'll talk about at some point. But there's one other thing that has really helped me to come into this place of really understanding how abundant we are. And the council said at one point, you know, money is just a form of exchange, right? Whether it was a token or a number on a computer or the original currency that we exchanged, which was farm animals, cows, chickens, pigs, that's, that's what we originally exchanged. And, and then coins, and then we got into, you know, currency, and now we exchange, you know, digital currencies and money on computers, you know, again, abundance is a lot more than just money. It's connections, it's resources, it's time, it's friendship, it's love, it's information, it's wisdom, it's all sorts of things. But the council says, what if, just imagine that the leaves on the trees are now your form of currency. 
You can use the leaves from a, a rose bush. You can use the leaves from a tree. You can use any leaf that grows in nature. If you would go outside right now, probably anywhere you are in the world for the most part, and you looked up at just one tree in your, in your environment, and you started to just count the number of leaves on a single branch, you would realize, first off, there's far more leaves than you realize, which is pretty incredible. And what is the intelligence that's growing every single one of those leaves to match perfectly all the other leaves and just, you know, I mean, it's just mind blowing, but they said, if you just started to look up and look around you and the leaves on the trees and the leaves on the, on the bushes and the leaves on the flowers were all uh, currency money you would pretty quickly realize you have way more than you could ever need or use in this moment. And you would not stockpile it. You wouldn't just go pick all the leaves and try to put them away and store them somewhere because they would decay. The universe is efficient and expeditious, right? And there's this intelligence always. And when we begin to see nature as our perfect mirror of our limitless abundance, we begin to, I think, surrender to this knowing that you wouldn't have agreed to come into this human experience if you didn't know that there was this infinite inherent abundance that would always be available to you. And I'll speak for myself. There were many times when I, I heard that from the council early on in this work I, I, I knew that was true. And yet my thoughts, my beliefs, as Sarah said, infinite abundance exists or limitless abundance exists just beyond the belief in your own limitation. You know, it's just a belief away. As much as I wanted to believe that that was true, I was still doubting it and denying it when I was saying things like, well, I only have this much money. Well, I got to get a different, I got to make more. I've got to do more, you know, whatever it was. And so just play that game with yourself. Go outside in nature. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, it's spring right now, right? The leaves on the trees are prevalent and you can just see, oh, okay. It's, it's abundance. And you can decide that a bird, whatever size bird, flying in the sky is, you know, a, a treasure is, is a rare coin or jewel that's right there in your experience or a squirrel or a rabbit, whatever it is, you know, you can just play this little game with yourself. And um, I do the same thing when I find money, right? Like a penny or a, a quarter or a nickel and just, you know, play these games with yourself where you start to really notice the abundance around you, because you're the one giving meaning to everything. If you say, I want more money and abundance in my life, and yet we don't notice the abundance around us and the meaning we're giving everything is that there's just a lack of, then that's the experience we create. Two people could be in the exact same place in the exact same situation with the exact same bank account and level of resources. And one is limitlessly abundant and the other is struggling in lack. That's absolutely true. And you said, you know, we can play this game. The truth is we can choose to play any game we want. The council recently said to us, if you will begin to ask your question and then know that the answer is I am creator within my own creation and really own that you'll find the answer within you already, right? And so you can choose to play any game you want. You can choose it, like Sarah said, with plants and animals and things like this. You can choose to play it with, you know, an expansive desert or mountains or ocean waves or prairie, whatever is around you, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't even have to be nature. It can be right inside your own home. It can be the planks on the floor. Um, if I begin, I would get very quickly, I would stop counting those. Um, and there aren't even nearly so many as there are leaves on a, on a branch of a tree, I, but still I would stop counting that just because it would, it would be like, okay, there, there are lots, there's enough, there's, there's enough. Right. And so you can also play this game 
believing that you need cash and still be very successful at it. You can believe that you need, you know, coins, currency, you know, digital or otherwise, whatever it is, um, investments. That's a way that you can choose to play the game. There's nothing wrong with that either. Um, and you can let money be a strong facilitator and you can have an extraordinarily prosperous experience where money is a dominant facilitator in your life. That's an okay choice to make too. And it's easy to play that just as well. Personally, I think it's more fun to allow lots of things to be facilitators in my experience and to recognize all of those connections um, and to not concern myself otherwise, you know? And so that just bearing in mind your creator, you are creator within your own creation. And this human life experience is your game. You can make it anything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. I just had the image of counting the, the planks on your floor and like imagining every single one is like a gold bar, right? Like you're walking on a, it's like the yellow brick road, right? It's like the, the golden path. I mean, you could just play this game with yourself all day long. It's, it's really fun and play the game because it will shift your reality and it will shift your experience. And you will start aligning to this energy of abundance and prosperity. One of my favorite moments in one of our master's class calls was a woman who was explaining to the council that she didn't have the money that she needed and she was really struggling. And we were having this conversation about wealth and prosperity. And there was a couple of different things that came up. Uh, number one, the council said, well, she said, I, my friend, I've always known that I was supposed to be in this life, a uh, wealthy woman. She said, I just always have had this feeling that I was going to be wealthy. And so the council asked her, well, would your friends consider you a rich, wealthy, wise woman? And she said, well, no, all of my friends know I'm struggling with money. And they said, you know, what you're putting out there, what your friends are reflecting back to you is also what the universe is hearing from you. It's what you're creating. So if your friends thought, oh, she's a rich, wealthy, wise woman, then the signal would probably be getting through to the universe that you would start attracting experiences where you feel like a rich, wealthy, wise woman. So they gave her the affirmation of just saying, I'm a rich, wealthy, wise woman, whatever it is for you. I'm a wise, wealthy, happy person. I'm a wise, wealthy, happy man or woman or whatever, whatever it is that kind of is, is um, fun for you. And just affirm it, just affirm it, just affirm it, just affirm it. And I played with this myself. I'm like, well, that's pretty fun. But the awesome thing was that within a very short period of time, she attracted to herself. And I had the same experience as well. Someone said, you're such a wise, wealthy woman. How did you get to be that way? Or, you know, wow, your life is so rich. People start reflecting back to you the words that you're saying, the truth that you're holding, what you're broadcasting. And if people around you are picking up on that signal, then you can be assured that the universe, source, the divine, God, whatever you want to call it, is also picking up on that same signal. You know, we are a force field of consciousness that is made up of particles of infinite creation that are always responding to you. They are not bad nor good. They are just purely responding to you by what it is that you are feeling. We are feeling beings. So when we're feeling like we're in lack and we're struggling and we're suffering and our friends know we're struggling and suffering and we're talking about our struggling and suffering and we give all this focus to our struggling and suffering and what it means, it's really difficult to be living in a abundant, prosperous, rich experience of life when that's what's getting all of your attention. If you begin to shift that, you're beginning to send a new signal out. You're beginning to hold something new in this force field of consciousness that is you. And the particles of infinite creation begin to respond to that in a way that is different. One of my other favorite teachings, and you know, some of these different things we've talked about in different places, but every time I talk about them, every time I reflect back on them, 
it opens something new. It goes a little bit deeper, but it was this woman who in that moment, it was the affirmation of galore, galore. I have everything I need and more. And she said, no, I don't because I don't have the money to pay my rent and I can't do what I would want to do. And, you know, the very first thing is what would you do today if you weren't in an experience of lack? What is it that you would really want to do, but you have to want to do it today? What would you do today? Like, for example, you might want to go to Hawaii, but do you really want to get on a plane today? Or is that, yeah, I'd like to have that experience, but what do you want to do today? Right? And let's just say whatever that is costs $100. And let's just say all you have in your bank account is $100. You really do have the money to do what you want to do today. And somehow you've got to get that message through to your body, to your being, to your cells, to the part of you that is broadcasting out there with your belief system, the truth you are attracting to yourself, the reality that you're drawing to you. So you don't have to go buy that thing that costs $100, but you've got to get into the feeling that what I want to do today costs $100 and I actually have the $100 to do that. Or what you want to do today costs $100 and you actually have a thousand, you have 10 times more than what you need to do what you want to do today. And I get this question a lot, uh, not, not actually not so much right now, but you know, in the past when we were working as, you know, through this journey, when we were on this journey and we've been, as we integrate the council's work, I think the, the messages get more expanded. The conversations get more expanded. We begin to up-level our experiences and we move into new things, but we were getting some questions for a while about, you know, I can't pay my rent or I can't pay my bills. And the council said, okay, well, you know, what is, what is your rent cost, you know, every month? And if you broke that down into a day, you know, what is your rent cost today actually, right? Is it $50? Is it a hundred dollars? Do you actually have what you need for today? And most of the answers would be, yes, you do. And so when you start to play that game with yourself and, you know, what is it that you think you want and what is it that you think you need? You know, there are times that you can focus yourself into a state of awareness and worth that you know you have everything you want and you need. And then sometimes you might be in an experience of, but I really want that and I can't have it. And if you really go into why you want it, there's a feeling behind it. A lot of times that feeling is freedom. You want to feel free to do what you want to do when you want to do it. But when we constantly reinforce our belief that we don't have what we want to do, what we want to do. We don't have what we need. We're waiting for it. It's not coming. Even though we say we want the freedom to do what we want to do when we want to do it, we continually through our belief, hold ourselves in an experience where we continue to draw a reality where there just has to be something else and something else and something else that we need before we can really be in the experience we want to be in. And if you can shift that around, your entire reality will change faster than you can imagine but you're not doing it to change anything. You're doing it because in this moment, you can get to that place of abundance and worthiness and well-being, and prosperity and feel and experience the richness of your life right here, right now, without anything having to change. When you understand that that's how everything changes, you really begin to move into this energy of true creation where there is no agenda. You live in a state of having everything you need and more. And what you co need comes even before you know you need it. Things just show up and it's a yes. So I'm going to pause. I'm sure we have some questions, Sarah. I think it'd probably be a great time to take some questions. Is there anything else that you want to add to that? We have some questions and a couple of beautiful comments. Someone who said, you know, not only are you the creator within your, your own creation, you are the most powerful creator in your universe. And that's absolutely true. The council tells us you can pretend to give your power away, but you can never really give your power away. Now I'm consolidating and paraphrasing some of the different things that they've said, but 
you can never actually give your power away. You can pretend that that person has more power than you or that you have to do this. But so actually that brings up for me, I just thought of it shifting between I have to, and I choose to, because even something simple like paying a bill, I have to pay this bill. No, I choose to pay this bill. I choose to pay this bill because I choose to live in this home and I choose, you know, the utilities that it has. And I choose the things that I purchase and I choose the experiences and so on and so forth. And you could even go a step further. I want to, I desire to, this is really part of my desired exchange in my game of life. So that's one thing that came up for me. Um, and someone pointed out, you know, you, you don't have to even look outside of yourself for the abundance. It's right there in you, you know, all this, think of the number of, like you can't even conjure the number of cells in your body or strands of hair on your head. Um, especially if you're one of us here, we've got lots of hair, <laughs> not everybody does, but it doesn't matter. There's no lack there either. You know, all of these things, just the skin covering you and all of this wonderful experience, your muscles, and the fact that you don't even have to think much at all to, to stand up, to walk you know, for most of us. And it's such a beautiful thing. You don't have to put all of this effort into it and everything can truly be that effortless. So it's wonderful. And Lucy has a great question about overcoming a partner's view. Um, someone who comes across with a negative mindset of lack and more lack. And I would say, let's pause first and explore that concept of the answer being I am creator within my own creation. I love to do this in my life, whether I'm looking at the reflections all around me as I walk in nature or, or sit in my own home of how, you know, abundance, clarity, or whatever it is that I freedom, how those are being reflected back to me or how I perceive them as not being reflected back to me and that being my own creation. So using those as reminders, reminding, oh, this person that I'm encountering is reminding me to tune myself to prosperity. Thank you for that reminder. Oh, what a wonderful reminder for me to tune to prosperity. And in that same recording that I just happened to be listening to this morning, the council spoke at length about believing that you have to, you know, someone had asked about, you know, do you, how do you ignore it? You know, because you either choose something, you know, by giving your attention to it, or you choose not that thing by not giving your attention to it. And so they, they said, it isn't about ignoring, excluding and eliminating it from your, your life. It is about elevating and embracing. So my encouragement is to embrace that partner who is right there up close, consistently reminding you that you want to fine tune and look for the ways that this person that you love so much, or they wouldn't be right there with you. How is that person not looking at lack, but instead looking at abundance? Because if you look, I bet you'll find an abundance of ways that they're actually tuned to prosperity that you might not have noticed before. Anything you want to add there, Sarah? Oh, beautiful answer. I really love that. Um, this comes up often, you know, when people are on this path of personal development or human potential or spirituality or consciousness, and maybe their partner is very much in the physical experience of working and making money and saving and and they feel like there's a separation or a difference or their partners in limitation and they want to get their partner to understand all of this so that then it's not such a struggle and they don't get triggered and yet sometimes that partner is the very person to help you go to the next level by really embracing this and so understand that you know all of this is about our own personal power and sometimes someone has been our source or if you're in a relationship you may feel like you're combining your source of income or your source of money and then you're sharing it and so uh we can tend to feel a little bit powerless or or like others beliefs are affecting our money and just i i would invite you to just ask the question first am I in my power here? 
It's not about whether they are in limitation or not. Am I in my power here? And that's the first step, right? Am I in my power? And a lot of times what happens is we get triggered. We're not in our power. And then we tell them how they're doing it wrong. Don't say that about money. Uh, you're just in lack and limitation, blah, you know, right? So we get triggered and we want to tell them how to be and we want to change them so that we can feel better, right? Just ask yourself, am I in my power? And just be aware of what it is that triggered you. And how do you elevate yourself into a higher state of consciousness about that? And then I, what I would say is, Usually this question is about money, right? Your partner's belief or how they spend money or how they save money or what they believe about money. Usually it's about money. Take something else that we talked about as a part of abundance, right? Whether it's time or love or friendship or resources or connections and begin to notice all the ways your partner is really abundant with their time with you or their love for you or the resources or the services that they do for you or whatever, you know, just start to shift away from if there's a lot of resistance and you got a lot of uh, trigger around the money conversation, find some other way to start experiencing abundance or seeing how your partner is really abundant, as Sarah said, um, you know, maybe they're really, really healthy. Maybe they're really positive. Maybe they're a really good father. Maybe they're a really good mother. You know, whatever it is, try to find something that is incredibly abundant about them and start seeing them as abundant. And you focus on being in your own power. Perfect and beautiful. We have a similar question, but a slightly different experience. How can I open my heart more and my mind to be unlimited and forgive and let go when dealing with narcissists and daily on guard and angry? So I would say again, let's pause and imagine that the answer is simple. I am creator within my own creation. And I would take that same thing. And when I encounter people who, wh whatever their experience might be, I keep two things in mind. One, yes, absolutely. We've converged here in this moment and this is somehow a reflection of me, but rather than condemning myself, I just become curious about it. What is this reminding me? What is this here to remind me? You know, whether this person has lashed out in some way or become irritated with me, or I might be the person who's gotten irritated um, because that happens no matter how conscious we are. This is not something, you know, that we sit on a mountaintop as the, the council likes to say, we didn't come here to sit on a mountaintop. We came here to live out here in the, you know, the real world human experience of whatever it is that we choose for ourselves. So how is this, you know, reflecting back to me and also how someone feels about me is always more about them than it really is about me. And so to give them absolute grace and compassion in a moment that you can don't ask too much of yourself. If you're feeling overwhelmed um, and inundated with whatever it is that their, their behavior is projecting onto you and your physical reality and experience, do what you can to step away, find a quiet space. And if you do this consistently, I'm not going to tell you that it's, you're going to do it once and then forevermore, you know, your life is going to be different with that person. They may transform right before your very eyes in a gradual way. It could be swift, but still incremental, or it might take a long time, or you might find that they move out of your experience or that they're less prevalent in your experience. And so my question to myself would be, how is this person reminding me to just love myself more and love others more? Because I don't choose to pretend to give my power away. I hold my power within myself. What do you have to add, Sarah? I have absolutely nothing to add. That was, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. My heart is like so full. I hope, her, I hope her heart is full too. Cause I, I 
I just feel my heart so open. Thank you for that beautiful answer. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, and so, I mean, we have lots of beautiful comments and so much appreciation everywhere. I know we're coming to the end of time, but we did have a question just pop up that I, I think is worthwhile to answer. How can I accept that my wife left me for a much more successful man? This is a perfect opportunity from my perspective to share with you that the council recently defined, gave us their definition of success while telling us that only we can determine what is successful in our experience and what success means to us. But they define su success as your level of happiness, your ability to experience joy in life. They equate success with joy. And from my heart to yours, one of the best things that ever happened to me was that someone that I was very much up close to asked me to leave. I didn't think it was a gift in that moment, but it is one of the best things anyone has ever given me because it allowed me to flow free and expand in a way that I'm not going to say I couldn't have but I likely wouldn't have if I had stayed in that relationship. And I am so appreciative to that person and all that they are and all that they've become for allowing me and for recognizing, oh my goodness, thank you for recognizing that we could be more not in this close contact relationship than we could have been together. How about you, Sarah? Oh, beautiful. I uh, it's, it's the, how is this happening for me, not to me question. And I think we all have had experiences where even if you know that you go, Oh, <laughs> but this is just a whole nother level of that. How is this happening for me? And yet in time, we do see the gift that maybe we couldn't have become who we really want to be. Maybe our paths were going in two different directions. And as difficult as it is, you know, allowing yourself to get to a place where it's not wrong. No one's right here. No one's wrong here. No one has to be wrong here. And you certainly don't have to be anything less than all that you are, even if a relationship changed form. So in the very nature of the question left for someone more successful than me, you know, to Sarah's point, what is your definition of success? And the council says, you know, there's a lot of people you might determine are successful and yet they're not experiencing joy in their life. They don't have a sense of well-being. They don't feel a sense of freedom with their time. Is that success? You know, only you can define what is success for you, but this comes back to your inherent worthiness is not defined by anything outside of you, not even your former partner or a spouse. Your worth is infinite. There's nothing that can threaten your worthiness. There's no one here that's more successful than you unless you believe that to be true. And so in the spirit of that teaching from the council, you know, really focusing on that success is how many moments of joy you experience throughout the day. And it may not feel like there's a lot of joy right now, but joy is the basis of our life experience. It's why you're here. And the more you can allow yourself to just experience the simplest moments of joy throughout your day and reaffirm to yourself that that is a moment of success. And coming to a place where you know that you yourself are absolutely a success by your definition of success being about joy or the love that you experience or the well being that you experience. And I find in that that when that's your definition of success, all the other things start to show up too. All the other things that we might have traditionally considered success start showing up for you too. So thank you for your question. Yeah, beautiful. This has been an amazing conversation, Sarah Elizabeth. 
I love co-creating with you. This is so much fun. Uh, you truly embody the what it means to be limitless abundance in all areas of your life. And I'm just so grateful for this time together. So thank you. You're welcome. And likewise, Sarah, I appreciate everything that you show up as every day and the opportunities that we have to share with those who are asking those who desire to make shifts and all of you here, that certainly includes you. Um, we're glad that you've joined us and you truly have joined us energetically. Um, I'd like to offer some home play. I don't really believe in homework, but home play go out there and find things in your experience. There is no out there anyway, um, but go out there, live your life, have more fun, find things, count those moments, maybe at the beginning, the middle and the end of each day, have a little alarm, whatever feels good to you to remind you, oh, moments of joy. Oh, what abundance reflections. Oh, what have I seen? And just play a game, play a game. And if you play it for 30 days, You'll play it for longer and you won't really need to because it'll just become a way that you live. Yeah, beautiful. And remember, galore, galore, I have everything I need and more right here in the inherent worthiness that is within you. So thank you for being here with us. We love you all. Have a great rest of your day.